The moment I venture into their hood, an abandoned theater that they have taken over and demolished, the mob starts closing in on me, and in a matter of seconds, they have me completely encircled. The boss, a burly man with a belly full of food and whiskers, gives me a threatening look before dispatching one of his young henchmen to investigate me, a classic gangland move. She shins up my thigh, her knife-like claws digging into my leg when she spots a bottle bulging in the pocket of my chinos. Perhaps she believes it to be something more potent than water. Clearly finding all of this quite interesting, the rest of the team is skittering around the wreckage and swinging from girders to get a closer look. But by now, your reporter is most definitely not laughing, dear reader. By now I'm overcome with panic, as you can see from my sweat-drenched shirt and rictus smile in the attached photo. Over the course of a lengthy career, I have encountered violent Albanian gangsters, razor-wielding thugs who control Rio de Janeiro's favela slums, and Afghan warlords. However, after meeting the Monkey Massif this week, which is a massive troop of long-tailed macaques who have taken over an entire Thai city center, they all appear subdued. These animals have demonstrated an amazing blend of cunning and violence, organizing themselves into gangs resembling ghettos. The primates that gather around the abandoned Hindu temple in Lopuri, a famous rest stop on the British Backpacker Trail located two hours north of Bangkok, were considered a highly sought-after tourist attraction for a long time. In recognition of them, a local businessman initiated the yearly monkey feast in 1989. It is a sumptuous feast where thousands of guests compete to feed the spoiled primates the most unusual foods. According to folklore, they are descended from a monkey warrior with extraordinary powers. Many Thais regard them as deities, and they are legally shielded from any human intervention. However, it is estimated that within the last 10 years, there have been 4,500 macaques in Lopuri city center, a five-fold increase in population, and they have been progressively settling in the downtown area. The monkeys have finished their amazing invasion of human territory, as I have witnessed this week. There are little blighters everywhere. Hanging from street signs, girders, gantries, window sills, roofs, and other surfaces, they wait to attack and rob people of their food. When they are unable to take it right out of people's hands, they are cunning enough to use blackmail, stealing sunglasses or other items from people and holding onto them until they receive a delicious reward. While idling at a traffic light, I witnessed a raiding group ambush an open-backed beer truck. They stole a few bottles, chewed off the metal caps, and drank them all down in the sweltering 100-degree weather. The macaques' tactics become more brutal and their turf disputes more severe as their numbers increase. After two unsettling encounters last month, things reached a breaking point. A market trader was mugged by one of the monkeys who kicked her violently from behind, dislocating her kneecap, and then stole her grocery bag. A few days later, a monkey jumped onto a motorcyclist's bike and took a carrying bag that was hanging from the handlebars, knocking the rider off. Although he was fortunately spared major injury, the police have now declared war on the macaques known as gangsters. Officers from the National Parks, Wildlife, and Plant Conservation Department gathered up 37 macaques shortly after the attacks, allegedly including four infamous gang bosses, and exiled them to a different province. They intend to begin significantly lowering the number next month by capturing hundreds more and moving them to cages outside the city, but, considering the significant challenges they faced in capturing the initial 37, that may be easier said than done. I'll go into more detail later. But when I was flying to Thailand, it sounded like a funny and fantastical idea that some gang of urbanized primates had taken over a city. I had grinned indulgently when a flight attendant, who had grown up in Lopbury, told me about the monkeys that attacked and stole snacks from the kids at his old school. A few hours later, I still wasn't grinning. Entering the inhabited areas gave me the impression that I had arrived at a dystopian sci-fi film set. It's possible that they were producing a fifth Planet of the Apes sequel after nearly 50 years had passed. An unnerving set of yellowish eyes, glinting with opportunistic purpose, met my gaze everywhere I glanced. There was a whiplash snap of a tail and a flash of fur behind every step I took. 
The unpleasant smell of stale ape poo permeated the hot, humid air. According to Promote Katumpi, the manager of the temple, the monkeys have split off into four rival gangs. And they act a lot like the inner city postcode teams in Britain. An alarmingly screechy mass brawl erupts whenever they wander onto each other's territory, either to seek for food or in pursuit of a sexual adventure. Mr. Katumpi gestures to their various regions. A four-story block that formerly housed busy stores selling clothes, phones, and noodles is now a demolished shell along one side of the high street. This massive, abandoned building was once home to traders who were forced to flee because of persistent thefts of their goods and attacks on their terrified clients. The locals have named this group the Building Gang. The Temple Gang is a different group of monkeys that have settled in 1,000-year-old ruins and are now defending the area like seasoned soldiers. Next, there is the Shrine Gang, who, as their name suggests, frolic around a sacred location, sating themselves like deities on the sacrifices made by visitors. Since Mr. Katumpi's office is located on the premises of the temple, he is able to visually recognize each member of this group. Its leader, A.I. Lore, whose name means, handsome, is a powerful, burly bruiser who eats the most food and attracts the most females. A fully grown male can weigh two stones and have extraordinary strength. On Wednesday, however, I witnessed a different malicious macaque, much smaller and, I believe, female, turn a British boy's wonderful first experience with monkeys into tears. Louis Patton, 9, of Nottingham, attempted to feed the primate some biscuits he had purchased from a street vendor when he was in Lopbury with his mother, a Thai woman, and his 60-year-old father, Lawrence. On Wednesday, however, I witnessed a different malicious macaque, much smaller and, I believe, female, turn a British boy's wonderful first experience with monkeys into tears. I can attest that it was an unsettling experience when the impatient monkeys jumped on his head and grabbed the bag before he could open it. Thankfully, the shock soon subsided, and young Louis, knowledgeable beyond his years, explained his experience away as part of the natural order. I wish I had felt just as philosophical when I encountered the cinema gang, the final group of four that had taken control of Central Lopery, amid the ruins of an old movie theater. During our shaky tour, Kanika Maxasathon, the owner, informed me that this picture house was the most popular in the city during its heyday, twenty years ago. She turned it into a mall when she saw that people were becoming disinterested in going there because of videos and streaming movies, but no one wanted to look around in a place where monkeys could leap on them at any time. So she shut it down, losing over £250,000 in the process. She has since installed metal shutters daubed with graffiti, but to no avail. The shivering screams and juddering runs of countless grey-coated squatters now reverberate through the empty theatre. The only film that has been screened here in recent years was an experimental Japanese filmmaker who thought it would be interesting to have hundreds of apes watching his film on a makeshift screen. Ms. Maxasathon has nearly lost everything, but she has no ill will towards the creatures. She's not even interested in having them kicked out of town. Not all of them, that is. They were all around me growing up, and I still think they're cute, she remarks. I simply believe that we need to reduce them because we have too many. It was a remark I heard again and again, which surprised me because they have devastated the inner city and with it the local economy. Some vendors, like 80-year-old Tossax Rasangwan, the proprietor of a hardware store, have attempted to frighten the macaques away by placing plaything predators like tigers and crocodiles in their windows. But the monkeys soon realized they weren't real so he now uses a BB gun to take pot shots at bothersome ones. Some, like a hotel owner who has permitted them to occupy every room on the top floor, not that he had much choice, have attempted to make accommodations for the intruders by treating them as equals. Some vendors, like 80-year-old Tossax Rasangwan, the proprietor of a hardware store, have attempted to frighten the macaques away by placing plaything predators like tigers and crocodiles in their windows. But the monkeys soon realized they weren't real, so he now uses a BB gun to take pot shots at bothersome ones, some, like a hotel owner who has permitted them to occupy every room on the top floor, 
not that he had much choice, have attempted to make accommodations for the intruders by treating them as equals. Regardless of their strategy, though, it appears that all of them want a few hundred people to stay around the temple as a representation of the city. Ironically, I've been told that rather than coming from their natural diet of nuts, leaves, and the occasional small animal, well-meaning tourists may have been the cause of the population surge and subsequent invasion by giving them sugary snacks and drinks. The temple manager, who learned this from a local vet, thinks that the energy rushes from junk food increase the monkey's libido. He informs me that, they can have sex up to 30 times a day. However, they have to make love swiftly because this is the moment when opposing gang members are most likely to assault them. He continues, it appears that the street food diet also increases female fertility. Therefore, how do the government plan to give back downtown Lopery to the human population? While the local politicians I encountered this week were quick to deny any responsibility for permitting this most peculiar coup, they were far too willing to take credit for organizing the counter-revolution that will, they said, bring Lopri back under human rule. MP Sidichai Lorprasongsuk told me inside his marbled house, safely tucked away in the city's rich suburbs, that he was collaborating with the Prime Minister to draft a new law that will take away the protected status of the monkeys in this one city, enabling local officials to relocate them. Several hundred monkeys would be captured and imprisoned inside a brand new garden during the first phase. When I saw it later, with its rubber tire swings and wire caging, it appeared more like a roomy zoo enclosure. The start of this procedure is planned for the end of the current month. Only a tiny number of monkeys will remain to reside in and around the temple while a second such facility is planned to house about 2,000 more of them. However, the MP stated that the Prime Minister's ultimate goal was to build a futuristic, monkey city, for tourists, all while his wife recorded our conversation. He declared, it will be our own planet of the apes. Amphal Unkapakornkal, the governor of Lopuri, shared his hope. At the moment, it appears that the monkeys are free and the people are living in a cage, he remarked. It wouldn't be easy to catch so many macaques, but by the following year everything would be back in order. Those who watched the arrests that followed last month's attacks, a farce in which streetwise simians danced merrily with national park trappers, do not share this trust. The macaques quickly figured out their trick and disregarded their attempts to get them into baited cages. The wildlife officers then shot tranquilizer darts, but the monkeys, which have an incredible ability to leap 16 feet and accelerate to 35 miles per hour in an instant, dodged them with remarkable agility. Before going unconscious, the handful who were struck had time to ascend to the highest point in the area and hide. The trappers were thus faced with an enviable decision. The drugged macaques, whose population has declined to the point where the International Union for Conservation of Nature has recently listed them as critically endangered, could die slowly from exposure to the scorching sun, or they could risk life and limb trying to reach their quarry on rickety rooftops. They dutifully selected the former, and 37 were apprehended in the end. However, according to a local journalist who filmed the operation, it took almost 40 minutes to grab a single monkey. How much time would it take to catch a few thousand? For the mathematicians, that one. Because of this, everyone I spoke with was quite skeptical of the widely regarded liberation plan. One such person was 37-year-old Arikanta Kankanison Metha, a mother of two whose kneecap was knocked out by a well-aimed kick last month. As she recovered at home with her leg in a brace, the market jeans vendor told me, I think it's impossible to get rid of them, there are just too many now. Lopri has already evolved into the monkey city. Affluent people tend to relocate. 